how's it going i'm will and i don't know if you've seen in the video title but in this video we're going to be making a nas or network attached storage what is a network attached storage what is a nas it's a storage unit to where any device on the same network can upload their data their projects their files whatever it may be to here to back them up just in case something were to go wrong corrupt hacked broken whatever it may be they can still restore it and get their information back because it's all on this device. You have all your data on one device and you're putting it also on another device. We see there are gonna be credentials and stuff like that so that you're the only one that can use it or you can select who else can use the, your data too. But regardless, uh, we're gonna be turning this old PC into an S. I'm gonna be walking you through how to do that. And yeah. So this is the PC that we're using. Nothing big at all. I mean, you can tell from like the front IO that we have here, it's pretty old. You don't need it to be really powerful, you just need it to have a fair amount of storage. What I have set up here is you have two large drives here, an extra drive here, and a drive here. This drive is going to have the operating system on it, which we're going to be using TrueNAS. I'll show you how to get that in a second. And then here is just storage uh, where you're going to put all the files and just store all your backups. And here, I'm gonna be using this for like applications on TrueNAS, such as like WireGuard and Jellyfin for like a VPN and like a media service um, to have all like videos and stuff. Okay, so I'm taking this hard drive out of the PC. This has the operating system. And I'm gonna wipe it and do a completely fresh install, showing you guys how to do everything. I'm using disk part on Windows, and I'm connecting my drive to my laptop through this adapter to where I can plug it in and my computer will read this drive so that I could wipe it. Then I'm gonna install TrueNAS on here. I'll show you guys that process after I wipe this drive. So I connected the drive to my laptop. I'm going to go to disk part which is a built-in Windows application. What it allows you to do is list the disks and drives that are on your Windows device, and you can wipe them, clean them, reformat them, whatever. And it's just what I've used. It's really easy to use. So to list all the drives on your laptop, you just type in list disk. And then in our instance, you want to make sure you select the right disk. If you don't, you're going to like just completely screw up your computer. But it's a disk one. It's only like 40-ish gigabytes. So we're going to select disk one. So you literally just type in select disk one. And it's now the selected disk. So now you could just type in clean. And it cleared it. It's completely wiped. And now if you list disk, you'll see that it does not have the GPT format and the free size is 100% of it is free. Now that we have the drive wiped, we need to get TrueNAS onto there. So TrueNAS is the operating system that I'm gonna to use to turn the computer into a NAS or a network attached storage. How you do that is you just get the ISO or the image of the operating system, install it onto a flash drive to make it bootable. Then you power on your PC, you boot from the flash drive and then install the operating system on the drive that you want to install it on. Now I'm obviously going to walk you through that, but I just wanted to give like a brief overview of what we're going to be doing. I already have the ISO over here, but I'm going to just show you where to get it. So you could just look up TrueNest Scale, which is what I'm using. There's TrueNest Core and TrueNest Scale. They both have their pros and cons. I like Scale better personally. So you just go to download TrueNest Scale and then I already signed up, but you just download this version. You click on it and then it'll start downloading it, which I'm going to cancel because uh, I already have it downloaded. So now I just need to go get a flash drive, plug it in, and I'll show you how you can flash the TrueNAS scale onto your drive. So I have my drive, my flash drive already plugged in now. And so now if I just do list disk, it should show on here. Yeah, it's like what, 60 gigs? Two applications you can use. Rufus and Belena Etcher. Belena Etcher uh, just looks a little bit more intuitive, user-friendly, uh, really easy to use. Rufus, um, not super easy to use. It's better for installing Windows for some weird reason, uh, but we're gonna use Belena Etcher. And so we're going to flash from file. Uh, we're going to go to my TrueNAS scale ISO. 
select and then you got to select the drive and yeah we're selecting the um, PNY USB and we just flash and now yes and wait and don't worry about like the stuff that pops up it's just because your computer's reading that the drive is it's like oh it needs to be formatted oh this is unidentifiable whatever it's fine it'll work just flash the drive and trust the process okay so now that our flash is complete i will take the usb out of my laptop and i'm going to install it onto the onto the computer that i want to install it on i have this little guy here right this now has the TrueNAS scale so i just need to plug this into here if i can plug it in the right way that'd be awesome all right so you plug that into there and now we need to boot from that with this plugged in which is where we're going to install it and everything hooked up we're going to power this on we are going to spam the delete key that's going to bios now that we're in the boot menu from spamming f11 not the delete key now we have all of these drives all of these options we want to go to the uefi pny whatever that's this guy over here with the trueness on it select it it's going to go into the TrueNAS installation. Click enter. Just select install slash upgrade. And you select the drive that you want. For us, okay, there are a few of them and there's two that's like 40. Ours is the HTS5. So this one right here, but just select it using space and then click enter. Yes. And we're having an admin. The password is just gonna be root. And now it's doing the installation. Now that it's done, we could just rest like restart it, take off the installation media, and we should be able to boot into the TrueNAS um, console. Um, just unplug this guy. Click OK, and just reboot system. It should be installed onto the nice little operating system drive we have here. It'll go through its boot process, which it is, should not scale. OK, now it's going to go down, do all of its stuff, and we will have the TrueNAS console. OK, once it's done, it should look something like this. Now, I don't have my TrueNAS plugged into anything to give it any IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into that switch, plug my laptop into that switch, set the IP range, and then so these two will talk to each other and that's all you really need for now until you want to install applications. But for the general setup right now, I'm going to just have these two computers talk to each other through that switch. Now that I have these plug plugged into the switch over there so that they should be able to communicate, what I'm gonna do is actually make them able to communicate by setting the IP. If you go to your control panel, uh, and then you go to network and internet, and then you go to network sharing center, you should see like, I have my Wi-Fi, and then I also have my um, ethernet. So if you just click on the ethernet, go to properties, and then go down to the IPv4, and then just set your own IP address, I'm going to use uh, 192.168.137.116. Why? Why not? If you hit tab, it'll automatically put the mask in for you. It's kind of nice. I'll just click OK, and that's all you need to do. Now you have the IP set for this guy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off my Wi-Fi, because it'll help. Now all you have is a connection from the Ethernet. We need to configure it. Click the option one, and it'll take you to here. Click enter, and then it takes you to this screen. You do not want DHCP. You want to set your own IP. So let's go there, hit space on no, oh, and then you have no. Now you need to create an alias, and the alias is the IP address that you need. 
So we're doing 192.168.137. The last one was 116, so we're gonna do 117 slash 24. Enter. And that should be it, so just save. And apply. And quit. <laughs> you should have the IP address on here. Now you should be able to enter that into the browser of the laptop and be able to access the user interface. Enter the IP of the NAS, of the NAS right there. 117. Enter. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Scratch that, scratch that. I didn't save it. But it saved. It should work. Just enter this for alias. It's good. That works. You have you have the true NAS here. So I will walk you through what this is like. Now you have the UI on your browser from the IP of the true NAS. So the username, admin, default, root, password. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty nice. So this is the look of the true NAS scale. So you have your storage, we don't have any pools. I'll tell you what that is about in a second. Data sets, shares, data protection, network, so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to show you how to do is to create a pool. And a pool is just where you store stuff. It's like the group. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create a pool. Let's just get started. In creating a pool, we're, you have to have a name first. So the name is just gonna be called storage. Why not? It's a good name. Um, we're not gonna have it encrypted because we're, we're gonna roll like that. So I'm choosing my two 300 gigabyte drives. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. The layout is gonna be a mirror. So it, one just mirrors the data on the other one. That's pretty much it. Uh, so that's the disk size, that's that. Everything down here is optional. You don't need to do anything like that. This is just a basic setup. So now we're just gonna review what it is. And it's literally just a pool name called storage, two drives, and they mirror each other. Done. Create a pool, confirm, continue. And this will create the pool for you to store everything on. In order for you to actually access the files on here, you're gonna need to have sharing capabilities and users, and you're also going to need to have SMB, which is what Windows uses to file share, and I'll show you how to do that. So now this is done. Uh, here's all of the views of this. We have one unassigned disk. I'm actually gonna add that to a pool, to a new pool. It's just gonna be called apps. Um, this doesn't, like give anything special this just shows like what the name of the drive was before it's that's it but the layout is just gonna be stripe it's not recommended but because it's not doesn't have any backups but it's just it's just one storage it doesn't have any backup to the backup it, you're just installing your apps onto there it's not recommended but for this case it's fine so we're just gonna create the pool and because I'm just going to be installing all the applications like WireGuard, uh, Jellyfin, and whatever else we want on there. So, it's no, it's no, no biggie. Now we have all of our drives in use. We have our apps drive, nothing's used on there yet. And we also have a storage drive, nothing's used on there yet. And then this just shows all of the health of our drives, which is nice. So, now we need to make users. So just go to credentials and add a local user. Let's add a user and his name is going to be called test. I know it's boring, but it's fine. Password for this demo, I'm going to use root for everything. So it, it just works. Now we're going to give them permissions to storage and we're going to give group permissions. So anyone in this group could access it and we're gonna create a home directory. So this will, okay, select these for that. So the home directory will basically just create a nice little folder for that user, for the individual user. It'll, yeah, so it's nice uh, to create the user in this folder. And now we have a user added, but issue is we do not have 
like we can't access it it's not shared to Windows I mean I guess we could really try if you want to go to network and go to TrueNAS but we're not going to be able to access it because it doesn't have it doesn't have any SMB file sharing so I'm just going to close this cancel okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go into shares we're going to add a windows smb share the path is going to be storage and default share parameters save start service automatically and now you should be able to access the storage from windows so if you go to network go to trueness now, if it doesn't work by just clicking on the trueness, which it did, but let's say it didn't, another way you could get to it is you do slash slash, and then the IP point one six eight point one three seven point one one seven, and then a slash. That'll also get you to that too. So just enter the credentials. It's a test and. And now we have access to storage and test file and you can upload stuff to here let's just upload let's say i want to back up my programs and it's being backed up onto the nas and it's kind of nice and just you can have different users different permissions this is just the basics so now that we have our user and now that we have our storage this is basically how you set up a NAS and you there's obviously more things that you can do with it you can set up two-factor authentication you could set up uh, data protection which I haven't done yet you could set up uh, good groups and folders with permissions that some people can access and some people can't uh, you could have a VPN service on here in apps but this is just the basic setup so I may make another video that will go more in depth, but this isn't this. This is just the basic setup. Thank you for watching, and yeah, now you know how to set up a NAS on your home.